when I graduated from nursing school before I started working on the age unit, a friend of mine from my graduation had made me this beautiful watercolor painting of this Pablo Neruda poem. And um, I just have been thinking about it a lot because some of the, the lines of it are like, um, you know, what would be basically like, just to paraphrase, what would it be like if just for one moment we all just stopped and stopped moving our arms so much and talking so much and just had to be. Um, and it's this beautifully lyrical poem. And so I'm I'm doing this big watercolor painting of kind of a comic version of it um, with the images, the text being the the, the poem and then the images being kind of just images arising from how my wife and I are spending this time um, that we're in, we're in a shelter in place order here. M.K. Serwick is a nurse and cartoonist. She's the co-author of the Graphic Medicine Manifesto and the graphic novel Taking Turns, Stories from HIV AIDS Care Unit 371. The one thing that keeps coming to my mind is being lost is a sense of safety around one another physically, right? The sense of walking up to your friend and hugging them, the sense of um, shaking hands, that physical closeness that I believe there'll be a day when it'll be back, but I feel like especially kind of coming out of our bunkers, we're all going to feel really, really wary for a long time. And that makes me sad. Yeah, so my book, Taking Terms, is a graphic memoir. It's a combination of an oral history and um, my own personal experience uh, during the AIDS crisis. Um, and in terms of, uh, and it's in comic form, to be clear. I was on the wards dealing with chaos. Our 23-bed unit was always overflowing. We had patients in the ICU. You know, it was there's times when that was so chaotic. Not quite as chaotic, I think, as it is now, certainly not on the East Coast um, or in Washington and the places that are really kind of experiencing most. And then I would walk outside and I felt like I looked around and I just sort of thought, like, there's this huge sense that the emergency that was happening inside those that building and that hospital wasn't happening in the outside world. The similarity I feel now is that there's a disconnect between those of us who the best thing we can do is stay home and do things that are, you know, engaging with popular culture and, you know, drawing and all these things that we're doing to just keep ourselves sane at home versus what we see the dispatches on social media from what is happening inside the hospitals and inside the wards. That's the disconnect I feel now, but I'm on the other side of it. I'm, I'm, I'm at home. I'm teaching. I'm not practicing clinically. That may change if there's more of a demand in my state. I obviously could potentially step up, but right now I'm not. In terms of how I figured out how not to be overwhelmed, you know, when you're a healthcare provider, you go, you know, you have your six patients in six rooms, and there's just an enormous story unfolding that is the most important thing in most cases that is happening in those people's lives. And you just go from room to room to room. You do that every day for, you know, weeks on end. And it just feels like before I did the book, it felt like I couldn't, it was just this mass that I couldn't even begin to, you know, figure out how to make sense of. Um, but that helped a little bit actually with doing the book, actually. Um, but the post-traumatic story disorder reminds me of in, um, in uh, I think it's called The War Within, um, uh, uh, Gary Trudeau, Gary Trudeau, is that, that's right, right? <laughs> so the, the character of, of uh, DB has, uh, has is having some PTSD and he goes to see this therapist and the therapist tells him that the thing with PTSD is that these these stories or these images they come to you in just like clips and he uses the, the metaphor of a film and they come to you like these clips and what you need to do is edit it into a whole like into a, a something that makes sense and as opposed to those clips just sort of flying at you so I feel like there's two different kinds of comics that are the ones that I can make in the moment are basically very sort of um, immediate. They're basically taking a piece of page in my sketchbook and dividing it in four and just kind of engaging that structure with a little text and image. But then something that ends up in a book uh, later may be a little bit based on those, but it's like those are just the notes, but they also serve that urge to kind of process the experience in text and image. 
but the kind of comics I would make into a book would be kind of something different and more for kind of public consumption and better organized and try to have narrative and put all sort of the formal properties together. But what I can do in the moment is just these immediate things that help me process information. I've got a work project that I'm working on, which is a comic introducing advanced directives, which are documents people make to make their wishes known about what kind of care they want or don't want, and then who they want to speak for them if they can't speak for themselves. Um, the odd timing of this is that I'm, the class I'm about to start teaching is actually a, uh, called Death Panels, and it's about how comics address natural death and have helped us help us or potentially help us think through dying and death. Um, and so I'm doing this in advance for that because advanced directives are really hard to do and to it's just a little overwhelming. So I made, decided to make a comic for my students and then to use more widely. I'm teaching a course that starts next week and uh, that's just been the struggle is getting everything together and online. And I've actually enjoyed it. I find it to be, I mean, it would be far better to see my students in person, but um, oddly, I feel like I'm probably going to be better prepared than the last time I taught a course at this institution because I feel like I'm having to think through things so much more carefully and trying to draw more of the stuff we're going to be using and engaging with and also trying to use more diverse um, media. So I'm not just asking the students to sit there and read pages and pages or even of comics or of text alone. I'm really trying to mix it up with some audio that they can put on when they go for a walk, some video that they can sit and draw while they have it on, um, and then, yeah, some, some text only and some comics. So, Is there anything that you would advise that you would want to pass along to uh, young cartoonists, uh, emerging cartoonists right now? Uh, I think a lot of things come to mind, and most of it's stuff I learned from Brian Feese, um, who created Bomb's Cancer and A Fire Story. Um, I think Brian is really a brilliant cartoonist, and he um, was unbelievably able in the, to, the moments after his house burned down to just keep working. And um, I think about him doing that. I think about Carol Tyler and everything she went through um, with her family and in the creating of uh, her amazing book, A Soldier's Heart, and her advice at that time was draw no matter what. Um, there will always be a crisis. There will always be a problem. Draw no matter what. And so I guess in a way, it's so interesting because why I think about in terms of, I guess, the best way to think of that in terms of advice is to look to others to learn how to keep doing what it is that you're so passionate about and, and just kind of take, take in, insight and inspiration everywhere. Um, and just do your work. How does making art create communities of compassion? When I think about answering that, I think about the community that we have around graphic medicine. Um, and people come with their stories to our conferences or, or even just this past weekend online. And there's this sense of bearing witness uh, to one another and extending uh, the grace of listening and being with um, to the stories that, that are brought to one another. And then knowing that when we share that, we will have that sense. Um, to me, that's how that works, I think.